Hello friends, let's understand the limitations of the forward contacts and the risk involved. Number one, the forward contacts have low liquidity. Number two, it is difficult to exit those contracts. Number three, there is a counterparty risk involved in the forward contracts. Number four, there is a lack of transparency in the forward contracts. And number five, the settlement mechanism in forward contracts is typically more complex. Let's understand each of these in detail. Number one, forward contracts have low liquidity. Forward contracts by nature are custom contracts. That is, item specifications could be custom. For example, gold of a particular purity. The quantity could be customized. For example, 1780 grams. Also, the other aspects such as the payment mechanism could be highly custom to the specific parties. And both the parties have an obligation to honor the contracts because most of the forward contracts are in the nature of genuine risk management or hedging transactions. The settlement typically happens through physical delivery and payment. And therefore, it is difficult to find a counterparty in case you want to exit the contract in between. Hence, these are by nature very illiquid contracts as compared to let's say futures contract which are standardized and listed on the exchanges and you can anytime understand what is the price of the particular contract number two forward contracts are difficult to exit or at times impossible to exit because there are no close out specifications you cannot reverse the transaction like you can do in case of futures listed on the exchanges and there is no netting of your positions like it happens in case of a exchange traded futures contract through a clearing house most forward contracts being in the nature of genuine business transactions both the parties want the counterparty to honor the transaction let's say i have bought gold from a counterparty i want the counterparty to actually deliver the gold of a specific purity at a specific location on a specific date and therefore the contract exit may be very difficult you might have to pay heavy compensation to the counterparty and there may be penalties involved as well the third limitation or risk in the forward contracts is the counterparty default risk involved in this case. There are two types of forward contracts that are possible. You have entered into a contract for let's say a listed product like let's say an equity with a counterparty. In that case, that contract can be cleared through let's say National Stock Exchange or Clearing Corporation of India Limited. The other uh, contract type could be one which is directly settled between two parties without a clearing house involved. In that case, the counterparty default risk is involved because there are typically no margins or collateral in case of a forward contract. The fluctuations in the price of an underlying asset may lead to the counterparty bankruptcy. And in which case you have to get into bankruptcy proceedings. Uh, maybe if the counterparty has been taken to insolvency and bankruptcy uh, court, you will have to understand what are the what is the hierarchy of settlement and you will have to stand in the queue with the other creditors. There could be additional impact on your business because the counterparty has not honored the contract. Now, for example, if you have purchased something from that counterparty, you will have to go out into the market, try to look for a seller and buy that particular item for your genuine business requirement. The fourth important limitation or a risk in a forward contract is that there is a lack of transparency. Because this is a contract between two parties, both of them want to protect the business confidentiality. They want their privacy to be maintained. Unless it is a contract which is required to be reported, let's say the transaction in government securities between banks which is reported through CCIL or Clearing Corporation of India Limited, unless it is that kind of a contract, the transaction details remain confidential. So any impact of the market fluctuations on those parties, for example, the losses that might happen because of that, even if they are notional in nature, are not transparent to the market. The fifth important limitation of a forward contract is that the settlement could be highly complex. There is no clearing house involved in the case of forward contracts because these are custom contracts between two parties. The settlement terms could be unique, how the items will be delivered, where they will be delivered. Same way how the payment will be made, the payment mechanism all could be highly customized. There could be disputes about the quality of the uh, item delivered, maybe about the quantity delivered, the place where it is delivered, right? And whether the payment has been made or not, whether it is acknowledged or not. So all these can lead to a lot of disputes. There is higher counterparty risk involved because the delivery and payment is not simultaneous as in case of a clearing house. 
So this is one of the big risk in case of a fault contract. I hope understanding this risk and limitations will help you draft proper forward contracts and manage your risk better. In case you found this useful, please do like this video, share with your friends and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Cheers.